Mark Johnson from the Australian Missionary News. I have here with me today Andrew West. Andrew is a senior writer with the Sydney Morning Herald and I for one am an avid reader on the internet of the Sydney Morning Herald and I often see your name Andrew so I am very pleased to have met you. It's a pleasure Mark, you're part of our problem <laughs> not you're reading it on the internet. We That's the to, problem. We, we need you to buy the paper but anyway <laughs> okay, we'll now, forgive you in the spirit of the occasion. Okay well thank you very much. That's now, all um, right. Can you tell us uh, where you grew up and about where you were educated? Yes I grew up uh, in Hornsby uh, in the far northern suburbs yes. of Sydney uh, even in the 1970s and the 1980s, it was a, a multicultural area. We had lots of Chinese Australians and Pacific Islanders. I grew up uh, with a large uh, Lebanese Maronite population in my suburb. Uh, I went to the local high school there. I later went to the University of Sydney where I studied politics and history and English literature. And some years later I went to Columbia University in the United States in New York where I studied uh, journalism and international relations. Now tell me, do you think that uh, uh, having had international experience uh, 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 like that has uh, helped you in your work? Oh absolutely, I think anyone who travels even, uh, even as a backpacker travelling on a shoestring uh, opens his or her mind to a new to the world beyond Australia. This is a comfortable uh, and it is, a, it is a great country, but we have a comfortable and somewhat uh, insulated life, um, I guess, as most people in the first world do. So I think it always opens one's mind to travel. Uh, I was educated in the United States and lived and worked in the US, but I made sure that I travelled throughout India and South Asia, South America, uh, through uh, parts of Europe and Russia, uh, to North Africa. So I've tried to expose myself to the world beyond, I guess, our, our fairly comfortable right. middle-class yeah. lifestyle. I have and always been, made sure, yeah. I'm just saying, uh, our children have in fact travelled. Yes, yeah. Of course it's an economic privilege too, and it's yes, something that yes. I could not afford to do until my mid-twenties really, until mm. I started earning, uh, you know, my father was a railway worker, my late father, I loved and adored him, but dad never had a whole lot of money, sure. and mum was a kindergarten teacher. Right. So travel was not something that we could afford to do, or I could afford to do until I started earning my own income in my mid-twenties. Oh, this is, uh, I'm just here, uh, 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 as an aside, Yeah. I think that I would have liked your dad because I was a, a, a train driver for 10 years. Right, yes. Well, he worked at Everly Railway Workshops <laughs> for 39 years here in, uh, here in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. For... Well, um, I, I, I'm now the footplate padre. Right. Well... <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. Sure. Okay. Now, um, tell us something about your journalism. Well, most of my journalism has been as a, as a generalist. I'm a uh, reporter with a, with a broad range of interests. Um, I have my own Christian faith which informs those interests, but most of my journalism has been uh, in the generalist area, although I have, I've written a couple of books about politics, a political biography, and a book about class in Australia. Uh, but uh, I guess most of the, the journalism that I've done has covered um, uh, human rights, has covered politics, uh, industrial relations, religious affairs, uh, transportation, uh, a bit of, uh, even a bit of economics, uh, and I think I once wrote a sports article. Oh, did you? <laughs> just one. <laughs> just one. It's the area of that, okay. it's the area that I know nothing well, about. <laughs> well, somebody once said that the reason they turn to the back page first is because there's always a victory. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Which I guess in a scarred and fallen world it's good to have um, to be able to, to talk of one victory every now and then. Except that when I think uh, uh, of Usain Bolt, just yes. 100 metres sure. uh, runner, there were uh, seven losers. Right. Yes, I... yeah, well, uh, well, there were seven people who didn't come first. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's a good way of saying it. That's right. And that's why you're the journalist. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what would be maybe two or three of the most uh, e e interesting articles you've written? Well, back in the uh, probably five or six years ago, uh, the articles that I, I wrote that gave me the most uh, sense of satisfaction and achievement were the articles uh, that focused on the plight of asylum seekers and refugees coming to Australia. 
Uh, my own conscience informed me very much about their, about their plight. Uh, and these were, these were uh, refugees of a different creed or faith, but uh, also we had refugees who were Christians coming from um, East Timor. And to focus in on the, the suffering that they had endured uh, really gave me a sense of what, um, of, of what the scriptures said. Uh, you know, that when a, a, a stranger sojourns in your land, it is your duty, you know, as Leviticus said, to mm. make that stranger mm. welcome. Mm. And, uh, and I really found um, a great sense of fulfilment being able to, uh, you know, explain their plight and also the contribution they could make uh, to our society in my journalism. Uh, I had followed the East Timor, uh, the plight of the East Timorese, for a very long time. In the 1980s, the issue that energised me was the suffering of um, the people in South Africa uh, under apartheid. And when that situation was resolved, not to perfection, but resolved in a democratic way, I began to focus, I guess, on the plight of the people in East Timor who were labouring under uh, and, and suffering under uh, Indonesian occupation. And I saw that this was a country, um, you know, that that Australia really owed, to, to which Australia really owed a great moral mm, debt. Mm. And uh, in the early part of this, uh, this decade, I wrote a lot about refugees mm. and, uh, and mm. asylum seekers. Uh, was it Lord Acton who wrote, um, uh, just that when good men are do nothing, evil prevails? Well, I thought it was Edmund Burke, but, oh, but, it could, okay. but, but, but Lord Acton was also a great... Um, yeah. Uh, but I could be wrong, but I thought it was Edmund okay, Burke. Fine. But I think, you know, if we're talking about the same, uh, you know, contemporaries of yeah. roughly the same eras, within the same century, sure. let's say, I, yes, you're right. I would never put myself in that category, by the way. I would never say that I was, you know, that by my actions, sure. you know, I was preventing yeah. evil. All, all I was yeah. merely doing was as a, as a, as a, you know, ordinary journalist was trying to apply whatever limited skills and talents I had. Well, to, every voice counts. Well, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Now, um, now this one is a bit uh, a tricky sure. uh, um, a question. It, it, it is really about uh, 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 just how many ordinary Christians feel. Yeah. I'm not the professional type. Sure. And, and, and that is that um, uh, 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 you can write here about anything. Sure. Yeah, any religious faith, and then there's discussion, then there's chit chat about it. Yeah. But there are many parts of the world just where that uh, that isn't allowed, and that yet those people can come here and that they can espouse those views. Now, can, can you answer that sort of question just to that mass um, uh, mass of concerned people? Sure. Well, look, I understand absolutely the feelings of 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 uh, Christians, my fellow Christians in Australia who feel uh, threatened, who feel perhaps a little intimidated uh, by what they see as the changing culture and the changing social mores. But the strength of a country like ours is that we're a secular country in the sense that we have a secular government. Uh, and when we have a secular government and a secular system of governance, by favouring no religion in a, in a formal and official sense, we guarantee freedom to all faith. And I would much prefer to live in a country which guarantees freedom to all faith. Remember, I think it was Abraham Lincoln who said in guaranteeing freedom to the slaves, we guarantee freedom to all. And to ourselves. And to ourselves. Yes. And I think, and I think, I would much prefer to live in a country where, where we favour no religion in an official sense and therefore guarantee the freedom of worship and faith to everyone else. To those people who want to... Uh, impose a, a religion or a faith. Australia is probably not the place to do it, but I think that our democracy and our values are such that those people won't succeed. So people of whatever faith can bang on as much as they like and try to impose their values on us. But, but the, I think democracy and egalitarianism and, a, and an openness of thought is so rooted in the Australian soil these days mm. that they won't succeed. So in the end, I'm not particularly worried about what a few renegades say, whether they're renegade pastors or whether they're renegade <laughs> imams. <laughs> I don't particularly yes. worry about what they say 
because I think this is a country that is, it is confident enough in its own values to resist any form of religious totalitarianism. Well, just a comment sure. on, on, on that. In the 1980s, late yeah. 80s or um, early 90s, yeah. there was a fascinating story in, yeah. the, in the Sydney Morning Herald yeah. about a school teacher who was talking about a, a group of, uh, of children playing mm. sports. Yeah. And that there were these new immigrants. Oh, they may have come from Afghanistan, they may have come from somewhere just in the Middle East. And a little boy who was from Vietnam, and he'd only been here eight months, said, Yes, they can play with us Aussies. Right. Yes. And isn't and isn't and I think Mark that is and I think Mark that is the, 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 the Christian spirit. Yes. You know? absolutely. And 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 I go back to the to the scriptures, to Leviticus, you know, that when a stranger sojourns in your land, I think we are to open our homes mm. and our hearts. So uh, and I think that's the beauty of, mm. of, of a democracy. Andrew West, are we to thank you uh, so very much? Uh, this is Mark Thompson signing off for the Australian Missionary News. Thank you.